Well, welcome, everyone. It's rare that this many people sit in a room so quietly, so well done. You must be going back to school. My name is Kristen DeVries. I serve as the executive director of the WMU Foundation, and it's my pleasure to welcome all of you here to Heritage Hall, a historic building appropriate for a historic announcement in the life of our institutions and in the life of Kalamazoo. Today is one compelling example demonstrating the special nature of our city of Kalamazoo, a community that wholeheartedly embraces open access to quality education and champions it like no other. In that spirit, we have important, exciting news to share and some very excited leaders ready to share it with you. Um, I'm not gonna talk too much, but your main speakers of the day will be Dr. Edward Montgomery, president of Western Michigan University and chair of the WMU Homer Stryker MD School of Medicine, Lin Chen Zhang, president of the WMU Foundation Board of Directors and chair of the WMU Board of Trustees, Dr. Paula Termulin, Dean of the WMU Homer Stryker MD School of Medicine, and Kathy Beauregard, our Director of Intercollegiate Athletics. I won't talk too much longer because the next voices that you hear are going to be theirs. At the conclusion of their remarks, we are going to have time for questions from the media. And now, it really is my pleasure to introduce Dr. Edward Montgomery, President of Western Michigan University and Chair of the Board of Western Michigan University Homer Stryker MD School of Medicine. He has served in these roles since August of 2017. He's a nationally renowned labor economist who has had a distinguished career in academia. He has served on the faculty at Carnegie Mellon and Michigan State and served as a dean at the University of Maryland. Just before coming to Western, he was actually the founding dean of the McCourt School of Public Policy at Georgetown University. But he's also participated in the public service arena. He was chief economist and US deputy secretary of labor during the Clinton administration and then during the Obama administration. He was a member of the president's auto task force and he led the interagency White House Council for Auto Communities and Workers. And I believe the press have shortened that to call him the auto czar. Since joining us at Western, he's led initiatives that include a new university-wide budget model that's going to launch this summer. Additionally, there was a major overhaul of the core curriculum called WMU Essential Studies, and that launched last fall. One of the most visible examples of his leadership is certainly the attractive new face of our South Campus, where the beautiful Arcadia Flats now sits. It's very sleek. If you have a chance to take a tour, I highly recommend it. You'll see what students are looking for today in the 197 unit space. Soon it will be joined with a striking new student center and a redeveloped Dunbar Hall. Also, during President Montgomery's tenure, we've seen our research portfolio expand. We've seen federal research funding increase by 33% and total research expenditures rise by more than 21%. And my favorite is our alumni are also demonstrating their confidence in his leadership. We have more alumni than ever in the past decade giving back and supporting this university and our students. Not only that, he led us all through a pandemic. So, <laughs> lest we forget, Dr. Montgomery holds a bachelor's degree in economics from Penn State and his master's and doctoral degrees in economics from Harvard University. Dr. Montgomery, the podium's yours. All those kind words uh, remind me of the adage, uh, uh, my father would be impressed and my mother would actually believe them. Um, <laughs> um, so thank you, Kristen. <laughs> it's an honor to be here on a historic day for Western Michigan University. This university owes its very existence to visionary leaders from Kalamazoo who banded together in 1903 uh, and prevailed over other cities and regions 
to make sure that they were the home for the new public university to provide, provide and produce teachers for rural kids and urban environments. They did that because they believed in the power of education. In this very building that those vi visionary leaders came together that brought to life that belief that education has the power to lift individuals and transform communities. We stand upon their shoulders, proud to continue to advance their vision of an opportunity university for anyone who has the ambition to learn and advance themselves. We have long been called a hidden gem. But if we take a good look at the world today, we see that we should be far from satisfied from the progress we have made in creating opportunity for prosperity for everyone. Today, higher education has never been more important in an economy built upon problem solving, creativity, and cognitive flexibility. Those skills will only become more important in the years to come. But a college degree has never been more expensive as the public policy shifts the burden of college from the public to the students and their families, increasingly placing it out of reach of too many. Across the country, far too many students enter college and leave with nothing but debt. WMU has joined with other educational leaders to increase persistence in graduation rates but much work remains to be done. Barriers to student success remain, and achievement gaps amongst the most vulnerable population are stubbornly persistent. While some barriers are indeed financial, often they go far beyond that. We're finding students who need holistic support, and we must look hard at our systems to ensure they provide equitable opportunities for everyone. Now make no mistake that the challenges we face today go far beyond our colleges and universities. We need only to look at the perspective of the past year to find heartbreaking stories of inequities and in health care outcomes across rural and minority populations. Our young people are demanding that we commit ourselves to furthering social justice both on campus and in preparing them to be positive forces off it. If we are to change our condition, we must envision a new future, one that is more holistic, more inclusive. We are committed to the hard work and the actions needed to maximize the potential of every member of our community to create prosperity for all. These efforts will be catalyzed by today's historic announcement. I am honored to tell you that we have received a profoundly generous gift from graduates of Western Michigan University. It is transformative in its nature, its size, and its scope, and it will revolutionize the inclusiveness and impact of our educational community now and for generations to come. Our benefactors have invested a total of $550 million in our students, medical treatments and breakthroughs, and intercollegiate athletics. It is the largest donation ever made for a public institution of higher education in U.S. history. It will have a deep and lasting impact on the future of Western Michigan University, the Western Michigan University Homer Stryker MD School of Medicine, our athletic program, and the Kalamazoo community. We call it Empowering Futures Gift because at its core is our donor's belief that education empowers people and communities to create a bright future for all. That's why a commitment to diversity, equity, and inclusion is at the center of this gift. It will make a difference to all the members of our community with an impact designed to ripple through education, health care, athletics, and through our community, crossing geographic and socioeconomic strata to elevate our ability to fulfill our mission so that all may learn. The Empowering, gifts, empowering Futures gift includes $200 million for WMU, $300 million for the WMU Homer Stryker MD School of Medicine, and $50 million for Bronco Athletics. It will fund scholarships, advance medical education and research, support faculty expertise, increase athletic competitiveness, and make it possible numerous other initiatives which will help us holistically develop students into graduates with purpose, 
who find meaningful careers and live lives well lived. In short, it will transform our ability to have a lasting impact on countless students and on the countless communities in which they touch. We will remain grounded in the ideas that offering an opportunity for a college education not only changes one person's life trajectory, it can change an entire community. For over a century, Kalamazoo has seen education as a gateway to opportunity and prosperity. But the prosperity of our community is predicated on the prosperity of each member and requires that we be intentional in reducing barriers to those who have historically been underrepresented. Empowering futures will enable us, uh, those of us at Western in academic and athletic arena and within the WMU Homer Strike of Medicine to significantly transform our ability to give access and opportunity to our students, to ensure that we attract and retain a diverse and dynamic faculty and that we can train caring and committed healthcare providers and graduate classes of well-trained doctors that reflect the diversity of the communities in which they serve. The donors who are making today's announcement possible are signifying that they believe in higher education's power to change lives. By investing in Western, they are demonstrating that they recognize and support our ongoing efforts to serve as an engine of social mobility. They are joining in and encouraging us as we do our part to level the playing field so that the chance for prosperity is more equitably available for all. We take pride in being a university that understands that it's not where you start in life, it's where you finish. Thousands of first-generation college students have chosen Western for its high-quality education. They earn degrees that help them change the trajectory of their lives and that of their families. We must keep that pathway open. We'll invest $200 million committed to WMU across four areas, access and retention, purpose and passion, well-being, and transformational excellence. These funds will put higher education and experiential learning uh, within reach uh, for thousands of students. We are committed to increasing scholarship support as well as room and board support so that students can have access to the living learning communities which are so important for retention. We want to keep higher education within the reach of their dreams. We'll also be expanding, uh, as I said, support for juniors and seniors who are cash-strapped and so that they have uh, financial means to keep them going up until the day I get the pleasure of handing them their diploma. Along with improving access to college education, it's important to help students use that access to marry purpose and passion to drive their pursuits on the job and in life. We want our students to discover what fuels their ambition and enables them to withstand the inevitable bumps of the road's life's journey. It's not a new idea for Western, but now we'll be able to expand on it through activities like paid experiential learning for students who rely on jobs to fund their education and investing in staff support to help guide students in their pursuit of a meaningful career. And if there's one thing that living through a global pandemic has taught us, it's that mental health and well-being are absolutely vital components of a rich and rewarding life. We know college students feel anxious. Most of us have, have dealt with stress as well during 2020. And so we've added resources to support that in counseling and other care. Empowering Futures will allow us to expand and broaden that support with new professional and technical tools aimed at improving mental health and helping students develop healthy habits that become part of lifetime choices. Students thrive in learning environments where they feel both challenged and supported. Our Western, our faculty already excel at doing both. Our most recent post-graduation survey found that 92% of respondents said they found a faculty member who cared about them not just as a student, but as an individual. 
That's a pretty impressive number, and thanks to our dedicated faculty. We now have the chance to offer those instructors and investigators the opportunity to expand their work and explore new arenas. We'll also have a chance to enhance the diversity of our faculty, to hire and retain dynamic and energetic educators to advance interdisciplinary education and research. I'll let Dean Termuling expound on the opportunities that Empowering Futures will offer to the Western Michigan University Homer Stryker MD School of Medicine, but as chair of the board, I can say I'm thrilled by the prospects of reducing the financial burden for future doctors that will enable them to concentrate on learning, to serve, and to heal. There also will be additional opportunities opportunities to expand recruiting, to attract candidates to reflect the full diversity of the communities that they serve. And by expanding the school's portfolio in basic science and clinical and community-based research will not only serve society, but offer students the chance to enrich their medical experience. We'll also be inspiring to hear from Athletic Director Beauregard and have her talk about how offering our students the chance to excel goes well beyond earning trophies and other accolades in competition. Means helping them build leadership skills, delve into the stores of their physical and mental endurance, and learn to, demand, to balance the demands of sports and scholastics. Our Bronco competitors will continue to make us proud on the field, across the arena, and over the ice. And now we'll have the ability to expand our support for their academic performance and well-being and broaden their horizons with new opportunities to connect with young people as mentors and role models. This is truly a groundbreaking gift with unprecedented potential to absolutely transform our institution and how we serve our students, our community, and the broader society. It will enable us to redefine the opportunities that we can offer, to live up to our potential as a diverse, welcoming, and inclusive campus that gives everyone a chance to discover a passion, to hone in on their own purpose, to explore the possibilities, and to deliver on the promise so that all may learn. Thank you. Before Dean Tumulin and A.D. Beauregard share their thoughts with you, I'd like to introduce and welcome to the podium the president of the WMU Foundation Board of Directors and the chair of the WMU Board of Trustees, Lin Chen Zhang. She will formally receive the Empowering Futures gift on behalf of the WMU Foundation. Now, President Chen Zhang, in addition to leading the Foundation Board of Directors, serves on the Foundation's Investment Committee and Committee on Directors. She, in addition to many local charities where she's involved on their boards, she serves on the Economic Advisory Council for the Department of Economics at Columbia and at the Harvard's Committee on University Resources. In addition to helping them and guiding Western, President Chen Zhang is the Chief Operating Officer of Zhang Financial, a leading fee-only wealth management firm. As a certified financial planner and a certified public accountant, she has been ranked as one of the nation's top 100 women financial advisors by both Barron's and Financial Times. She holds two master's degrees, one from WMU oop, 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 and an MBA from Northwestern. President Jin Jang, this podium is all yours. Thank you, President Montgomery. On behalf of the Western Michigan University Foundation Board of Directors and the Western Michigan University Board of Trustees, it is my great honor to accept, I'm too excited. <laughs> it is my great honor to accept this incredibly generous gift empowering futures. In my line of business, I see big checks very often, but this is the biggest check I have ever seen. As a matter of fact, this is the biggest check any public university has ever seen, so good for us. <laughs> it 
it is an investment, just like President Montgomery indicated. Our donors, who are also alums, believe in the power of higher education, and they believe in Western Michigan University. So we are just so incredibly grateful to have such remarkable donors, our friends of the university. Because of this extraordinary philanthropy, we will have so many fellow, countless fellow Broncos who will go on to their journey to fulfill their career aspirations. And we will have many physicians who will be skillful and caring. And those people are going to make, those young people are going to make our world a much better place for us to live because we create opportunity and access to them. And because of physicians, we will be live longer and most importantly, healthier. <laughs> I always think we should encourage all the brightest and smartest to be doctors for our own sake. So today we stand here just feel blessed and inspired knowing our university and our community will be changed forever. It's not going to be the same again. We are witnessing history here, my friends. This is going to be one moment will be forever recorded in the history of Western and our community. So let's give another round of applause for our generous donor. Thank you. Well, you can see by our first two speakers how incredibly energized all of us are, and we think that this is going to be infectious for all of you. So next up, I'm going to invite to the podium Dr. Paula Termulin, Dean of the WMU Homer Stryker MD School of Medicine. She took the reins of WMed last month on May 1st. Uh, what an extraordinary start to her time here in Kalamazoo. We're giving a great big Kalamazoo welcome. <laughs> Her appointment actually followed an extensive national search uh, to replace the founding dean, Dr. Hal B. Jensen, who retired in April of this year. Dr. Termulin is a professor of surgery, and since 2015, she was the regional dean for the Duluth campus at the University of Minnesota Medical School. Now, earlier today, we were talking, and she shared with me how proud she is to be a first-generation college graduate. She is fitting right in. <laughs> After college, she did attend the St. Louis University School of Medicine and completed her general surgery training at the University of Texas Health Science Center, and then a surgery oncology fellowship at the MD Anderson Cancer Center in Houston, Texas. She is recognized as a brilliant surgeon, as well as an academic leader, and we are all confident she's gonna lead WMED to new levels of national distinction. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Paula Termulin. Well, thank you, Kristen, for that very warm welcome, and thank you really to all of the Kalamazoo community for their very warm welcome. And wow, I mean, can you imagine your first, you know, your first month on the job? And all the things that you talked about in your interview about the big dreams that you have, and you have now the resources to make something happen. The Empowering Futures gift is, is truly one of the best gifts a new medical school dean could ask for. And it opens the possibilities for us to do so many things on behalf of the community, the medical school, and most importantly, the people we serve. This gift is transformational. It's an incredible boost to the medical school's mission going forward, and it is really going to change the trajectory of our institution exponentially. As you heard President Montgomery reference, promoting diversity, equity, inclusion, and I'm going to add justice, is a core principle of the Empowering Futures gift, and also for not only the university, but the medical school. 
We truly need to create a workforce that reflects and understands the people we serve. This means building diversity, equity, inclusion, and justice into our institutions, and not just with our students, but also our faculty and our staff. This will not only transform Western Michigan and, uh, University and WMED, but it's also going to transform Kalamazoo and Southwest Michigan. And when we do that, we aspire to not just do it amongst our peers, we want people to learn from us. For us as a medical school, there's many of us that feel that this work is very, very important. What we aspire to be is the leader in how to get it done. And this incredible gift, we hope will inspire others to join us in that work. The Empowering Futures gift is going to help students, most importantly, and allow them to go to medical school and not have to worry about the financial pressure. We anticipate that we will be able to create enough scholarship dollars that every single one of our students will receive something. And this is personal to me. Uh, you heard Kristen reference this. I am a first generation college student. I'm originally from Dayton, Ohio, so don't hold the Ohio against me. Uh, and uh, the other thing I'll, I'll share with you is the first month I become dean is the month I paid off my student loans. So you have to pause and think about that for a minute because you know I'm not 25. So I've been paying them for a long time. Uh, and what I really don't want is for any of our current graduates of the WMU Homer Stryker MD School of Medicine to be paying off their student loans the first month that they become dean. So I recently met with our students and I heard from them about the challenges that they face. One thing that people don't realize is that not only is it expensive education to train a physician, um, but there's also the additional costs that all students face around living in a community. Uh, and there's food insecurity in the medical student population. I, I have yet to understand exactly what that looks like at our place, but I know that this is something we are nationally having a conversation about. So one of the things that this gift will do will help us support our students completely. In other words, meet their financial needs, not only around education, but also provide resources so that we can recruit the best and the brightest to come to Kalamazoo. Fundamentally, medical schools are called upon to create physicians that reflect and understand the populations of people that we serve. And this is really the gift that's going to help us do that in a big way. This gift provides the resources to WMED so that we can make a significant impact on some of the most challenging health problems. The future of medical research at WMED just got brighter. Our laboratory scientists will now have the ability to have the most innovative and creative spaces to do their work and solve some of the toughest health problems we face. But equally important, we now have the resources to attract some of the smartest people, the brightest minds, that can help us achieve health equity. Individuals who have spent time working with communities side by side, identifying problems, but more importantly, finding the solutions that we can create and really uh, be able to foster a healthier and more equitable health community overall. And if we can do it in Kalamazoo, we want to show others how to get it done everywhere else. So this gift is really going to serve the Kalamazoo community in so many ways. And with that kind of a gift, it really means it's our obligation to give back to the Kalamazoo community. Now, we've already started to do this in the different ways that our school in the last 10 years has, has done. You'll see our students on the streets. You'll see them at the vaccination clinics. You'll see them at nonprofits in our area, serving the people that welcome them to Kalamazoo. And I want to thank all of you for letting our medical school be an integral part of this community. So just last week, we held our virtual celebration in honor of WMED's 10th anniversary. But the fact is, we have more than 50 years of history and partnerships with the Kalamazoo community. WMED was formed through a collaboration of Western Michigan University and Kalamazoo's two health systems, Ascension Borges and Bronson Healthcare. And I really want to welcome our, our two CEOs of our healthcare organizations who are able to join us here today, Mr. Bill Manns and Mr. Peter Bergman. Our partnership with these three organizations was really our foundation. And I cannot tell you how important it is that they are the fundamental components of our medical school. There's really no other school that's positioned just like us, to have all the pieces in place to be able to really pull together the continuum that starts 
a student off with their undergraduate degree, and I might add, maybe we may even attract some of those athletes, okay? Move them through medical school and then put them into our hospitals and clinics to serve our region. It really gives us the ability to work collaboratively across our community and create the kinds of physicians and scientists that will not only serve Kalamazoo, but go way beyond our area. So on behalf of the Medical School Board of Directors, our faculty, staff, and students, I truly want to thank the donors of the Empowering Futures gift for investing in us, for believing in us, and for their commitment to the future of medicine. And because of you, our future is very bright. Thanks so much, Dr. Termulin. And I'm going to transition us now from one of Kalamazoo's newest residents to one who has spent her entire life dedicated to the values of our Kalamazoo community. And that is our final speaker for the, this afternoon, Kathy Beauregard, Director of Athletics at Western Michigan University. A.D. Beauregard has been involved with the Broncos in several capacities over 38 years, and this fall will begin her 25th season as athletic director at WMU, which makes her the longest-serving athletic director of NCAA FBS schools and just one, one of nine female athletic directors out of 130 football bowl subdivision schools. In addition to her responsibilities overseeing the Division of Intercollegiate Athletics, she sits on the President's Cabinet with me. The Broncos, under Kathy's leadership, have experienced success on and off the field, as well as facility expansions and upgrades. In total, WMU has won 58 MAC championships and a Central Collegiate Hockey Association championship. In addition, 35 teams have made NCAA tournament appearances. The WMU football team has been invited to eight postseason bowls during her tenure, including a New Year's Six Bowl when the Broncos competed in the 2017 Goodyear Cotton Bowl Classic. A.D. Beauregard herself has received multiple awards in recognition of her outstanding leadership and service, uh, including very recently the Michigan Woman Forwards 2020 Woman of Achievement and Courage. And not only that, but she's an alumna. <laughs> Kathy holds a bachelor's degree from Hope College and a master's degree from Western Michigan University. As she will say, it's a great day to be a Bronco. Please welcome A.D. Beauregard. Uh, this couldn't be a bigger dream come true. As we've talked about, I have spent almost 40 years here at this great university that I would also say my father started the generation of nine Broncos that have graduated from Western Michigan University in our family. He's actually here today. So, Don Button. <laughs> We just keep finding more Broncos, which is, which is awesome. So as we know, it's always a great day to be a Bronco. I actually looked back at when we started utilizing that, and it was actually the year 1997 when I became the athletic director. So it's been fun that we've been able to keep that as a part, and I know that there are so many Broncos out there today that are so proud of this announcement, of this transformational decision for some alumni to truly make a difference in our entire history. So Kristen, thank you. As we know, it's a great day to be a Bronco. I also add my deep, deep gratitude to the donors for their extraordinary level of generosity and for believing so strongly in the mission of this university, which we work to carry out every day. For many, athletics are the front steps to Western. Intercollegiate athletics makes college possible and enhances the university experience for hundreds of students every year. The Empowering Futures gift 
will bolster our efforts to su support student athletes who come here from all over the country and the world to excel in chosen sport and perform well in the classroom. The opportunity for them to be a part of this inclusive championship environment that values academics and competitive excellence will benefit them forever. We also are proud that our Division of Student Athletes make academic excellence their priority. They are students first and foremost. This is exemplified every year by the numerous national recognitions our students receive for academic achievement or for maintaining high grade point averages. But, of course, our student athletes also excel in their respective sports and are guided by the talented group of coaches to reach the highest levels of collegiate competition. I'm thankful every day to be able to work with my leadership team and our staff. Our staff has high expectations of athletes, always keeping their health and welfare as the top concern. Our goal is to build championship teams that perform well in their conferences, competing against other top athletes. And as we reach these championship heights, it be, brings wonderful recognition to the university as a whole, as we have seen many, many times over the years. Because of their excellence, our students have built pride and community both within the university and within the greater Kalamazoo area. Community service is a huge part of what we do. And in addition to representing us in the classroom and competition, our student athletes, along with their coaches and department staff members, have also demonstrated their strength and dedication to one another by establishing this year, We Must Unite, which our students and our staff came together, wanted to call it after WMU, We Must Unite. It's the WMU Athletics Task Force. Our values and actions as a division are consistent with the diversity, equity, and inclusion goals and commitments embedded in the power, Empowering Futures gift. Our students and staff have taken on the challenging work of listening to one another to learning and taking action to address systemic racism and social injustice. With the support of this gift, we can greatly advance those critically important efforts, and Broncos are absolutely going to get an opportunity of a lifetime to be a Bronco, to come and play the sport they love, be mentored by the coaches that are some of the best in the country, and grow through internships, opportunities in the classroom, and ultimately, in careers they are prepared to pursue after they graduate. They also will always be Broncos. And as members of our Bronco family, they will be empowering the world. Thank you to everyone for making this such a very special dream day. I can't thank uh, the opportunity. Working with the Montgomerys has just been um, a, a, a empowering, futuristic decision for our campus. So I would now like to bring back to the podium President Montgomery, and he will bring in some closing remarks, and maybe we can get a Go Broncos out of each other. So, okay, thank you very much. Wow, this has been an inspiring moment. As all of you have heard today, we're here to witness really a once-in-a-lifetime change that's being made possible, uh, not only in our institutions, but more importantly in the lives of our students, in the communities that we live in, for not only today, but generations to come. It will allow us to deepen our 
uh, commitment to diversity, equity, inclusion, and justice across our campuses and to provide opportunities for students who might otherwise have access to the uh, social mobility of a college degree or the opportunity to become a doctor. Those of us who are in education are here because we're committed to making a difference by educating and inspiring others and offering them a chance to discover their own potential and seize those opportunities. Thanks to the incredible generosity and foresight of these donors who have chosen to bestow this generous gift, we'll be able to make a difference for students who are here today and for the next 100 years. We'll open doors to learning and collaboration across our community, support student athletes, advance medical research and treatments, and prepare new generations of committed physicians. Through this investment, we'll have entrusted we've been entrusted to put forth our best to draw out the same in those we serve. It's our responsibility to reach the full measure of possibility that this gift creates. Just as we entreat our students to dig in and to strive in pursuit of their own purpose, we will also put forth our best efforts and do the same for them and for those who follow them and indeed everyone we serve. Our donors are exceptional in the breadth and depth of their generosity. This is the largest gift they've ever made. And while they support many causes and institutions, they gave the Empowering Futures gift to us because they believed in our ability to create a new condition. To our students and for the students of tomorrow, they are saying, we believe in you and the unique purpose you can craft to make a difference. This is a vote of confidence for our faculty and staff and for what they do every day to serve our students and for the vision we are creating for the future. To our alumni and friends, it's an invitation to join us as we create a new future that will grow into a legacy that stretches across time. This is a statement indeed to the world that if you didn't know before, Western Michigan University is on the rise and it's moved and nestled in Kalamazoo, a special place that believes in the transformative power of education. This is a place for anyone with ambitions to chase their purpose, live a meaningful life, make a difference, advance themselves and others, and respond to the opportunities of a changing world. To those who made empowering futures possible. Thank you for your belief in Western Michigan University. Thank you for your trust. And most of all, thank you for believing in the new future of transformational education, knowledge generation, and health care education that we're trying to create here. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Montgomery. You can tell what an emotional day it is because even our clouds have tears of joy for us today. <laughs> this does bring us to the conclusion of the formal program, uh, but now we can take some questions from the media. If you have a question, raise your hand. Please do let us know your name and media affiliation, and then I'll point out which of our leaders uh, is going to be appropriate for answering. I have a question for President Montgomery. Uh, my question is, how soon do you hope to start deploying uh, this donation? So we are scheduled to receive uh, by the first payment this year, and it will be available for spending and deploying for next fiscal year budget for the 22-23 uh, calendar year. Um, yep. Kayla Miller with MLive, um, also for President Montgomery. So it's true that this is over a 10-year period to the foundation? Oh, microphone, sorry. <laughs> I thought I had a big mouth, so anyway. <laughs> yes, uh, this will be coming in over the course of the next 10 years.
Andrew Feather with uh, WWMT TV News Channel 3. So obviously I know this money is very new to you guys, but you mentioned that 200 million of the dollars would go towards initiatives including um, scholarships or need-based scholarships and um, increasing faculty, things like that. Do you guys have any set numbers on what you're looking to do there, like the number of scholarships you're looking to add, things like that? We're still working on the specifics uh, of the scholarships, but th this is an incredibly generous gift, which will allow us to be able to move uh, that bar significantly forward. So uh, stay tuned for more details uh, over the next coming weeks. I have another one. Um, now, I just want to make sure that I heard correctly when talking about WMED that there's going to be enough financial aid to ensure that all students have access to some. I, I believe that's what I heard. I just want to make sure I heard that correctly. And if so, can you kind of expound on that? Yeah, sure. So, um, so we have come to understand it's very important to our, our donors that we're able to provide at least some financial support with the goal of uh, pro providing that financial support for all of our students. That can take place in a variety of different ways. Um, it could be anything from, uh, in some instances, um, full scholarships for their educational costs. Uh, there's money set, uh, that we're already targeting to help uh, what we call one of our uh, pipeline programs to help support some of the um, living, cost of living uh, in addition to tuition for programs that will help prepare people to enter medical school. Uh, and another place where this will play out is that really every student, if they can get something that will help offset the expenses, that, that's really our goal. Um, the reality, though, is that this is an opportunity also for us to invite others into that work. And so we've got some creative ways that we think we'll be able to uh, open opportunities for many people to be a part of that. Hi, um, I am Miller from Western Herald. Will any of these funds be directed towards the new university rebranding and logo rollout? No. <laughs> um, is, is there an expectation that this money won't really be used for facilities, or are there some areas um, that it could be used for facilities, say athletics or um, for the med school? So a portion of this gift at the medical school will be utilized to uh, help to renovate two of our uh, floors, one of which that hasn't been built out yet. This was an explicit component of the gift as well. Uh, we're renaming those areas as the Halby Jensen um, Institute. Uh, research Institute. So that, that's the one part of the facility that we will be, we will be working on. Uh, Kayla here with MLive again uh, for President Montgomery. Um, so obviously the pandemic had a financial impact on the university. Will this help restore some of those funds that you lost or not? Um, this is really a, an opportunity to do new and different things. Uh, this is an opportunity to enhance our scholarships, to enhance ways in which we support people from beginning students through their graduation, to think about programmings, to give wraparound holistic services. Uh, it's not really it's about filling gaps, it's about creating new opportunities. Uh, Andrew with News Channel 3 again. When, were, when did discussions about this donation first start? And just what was your initial reaction when you, know, you heard that number for the first time? Pick up my jaw. <laughs> uh, the, 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 to be fair, uh, this is a conversation that's been going on for, for, for a while uh, and uh, in various different forms and conversations and interest as the, our, their interests and the universities evolved and uh, they, they came to a head relatively recently. Lauren Coomer with Fox 17. Um, my question's for A.D. Beauregard. I was just wondering um, if you know how you'll be splitting up the funds between different athletic programs. Thank you for the question. Um, actually, we have not had a chance to sit down and put the entire plan together as this funding has just come, become available to us. But the exciting part is, is it's really going to be able to get the student impact, the student issues that is why we do what we do. So you will find that amongst 
all of our decisions that we make and certainly do also want to spend some time talking to our staff and our student athletes about what some of those needs are too. So thank you. Any others? Do we have additional questions? Thank you. Um, how will scholarships outside of WMED be allotted, and will upperclassmen have the same chance as incoming freshmen? So you're, you're, you're ahead of us uh, on, on the details of just how many scholarships and, and rights to structure. But some of them will be designed for those first two years, uh, particularly the housing support, uh, when uh, people uh, may, may not have that opportunity. And it can be very important to keeping them here. But we realize the initial dollars often run out. Uh, and so in our community where many of our students are working full time, things can knock them off the rails and they can see the finish line that they can't complete. And so we'll dedicate some of the money for, up, for upperclassmen to make sure that those who've proven they can do it get the opportunity to walk across the stage. Okay. Oh, one more. I'm Colin Murphy with the Western Herald. Um, part of the South uh, Southern Neighborhood District renovation plan has included uh, a new hockey arena. Has, does this money, especially the 50 million that is earmarked for athletics, um, help speed up that process, or does it affect that at all? Um, I think the, the master plan has always had an arena in it for for years and years and years and years, and this is not what that gift is for. Well, there are a bunch of us that now need to get back to serving our students. <laughs> so uh, we will let the rest of you go with a very heartfelt thank you and excitement for what is coming next. So keep an eye on WMU. We can't wait to share with you the impact that these dollars will have for many, many, many years to come. Thanks so much, everybody. Tony Proudfoot and the